Hey, Tip the Barber here. I'm here with Brock. We're in Swartzville, Pennsylvania at Barber Bros. I'm going to be doing some beard work and a shadow fade today. So I will start with the one and my wall magic clip. I do the same thing that I do with my skin fades as I like to set the line all the way around. And you can see I'm doing a flicking motion, not a scoop. Scoops tend to leave lines in the hair. When you flick out, it kind of creates a blend without the clipper guard, which makes it easier on your next guard. And I will go all the way around, almost like I'm doing a low fade, set this little low line. So now that I'm done with the one, I'm gonna go in with the two and that's gonna set my next level and help me blend through the haircut to get to the top. And as I go up the head, you can see I kind of lift my clipper off the head and through the longer hair. That also creates a blend, which also makes your next step just as easy. And you could almost see the hair blending in without me even doing any shear work yet. Hold the ear down, that also makes it easier to make the hair that you're cutting above the ear to be level. And now the next level is going to be the one and a half and I'll start from open and go down to close. This is the most important part because I'm not going to be taking any clipper above where I've been using. So all this is going to be either a clipper over comb with no guard or shears. So I start open and again, the flicking motion. And comb through. And just continue to do the same thing over and over until you see the faded line and you could go down to the one. I will leave this area just a tiny bit darker. It adds a little bit of a little bit more detail to the haircut once you do the lineup. So right here, I'll go down to a little bit above closed one and a half. And with the one, you're gonna complete the same step, flicking out away from the head to create a better blend for the taper fade. And as I get down to the one closed, I start to use just the corner of the clipper and that creates a little bit more of a blur for the fade. Now we're down to the half. So you could kind of see where I went with the one. So the half I'm going to flick out right where that one started. Because we didn't set a guideline for the skin fade. And the closer I get to skin, the tighter I stay on the middle of the head. I try not to take so much of this hair down because the lineup is crucial to this haircut. Now I'll go in with the magic clip again with no guard, open and flick out. And I'm going to stay in this little area in the middle of the head, like I said, to keep that darkness on the outside of the hairline so we could still make it detailed. And now I'm kind of just using the heel of the clipper to keep me from creating lines in the haircut. And you can see exactly where I left the hair to create the lineup to make it nice and sharp. So now I'll use a clipper over comb method for the back here. Um, the occipital bone is very tricky. Everybody's is different. One could protrude, one could not protrude. So it all depends on how you hold the comb. You want to use a comb that isn't the same color of the hair so you can see the hairs through the comb and it makes it a lot easier for you to do the clipper over comb technique. So 
So I pull out like this and you can see all the hairs that are too long. Always comb down to reset the hair. And you could slowly see the hair starting to blend out. And at the end when we go through with our shears, that's when this will be totally faded for the end of the haircut. We typically leave his bangs a tiny bit longer than the rest of the haircut. So what I usually do is I like to separate the bang just a little bit so I don't accidentally take any of it off. And then I continue with the clipper over comb on the side here. Now a lot of people think if the haircut is going back like this, then that's how you have to do clipper over comb. I don't do that. I comb the hair straight down. That's the only way you're going to truly see what hairs are too long. And then after you make your cut, that's when you could push it back and see that it still completes that blend. As long as you don't use too much water while you're using your clippers, it will not jam them up or make any different cuts for the haircut. I like to use water in the middle of clippers just to kind of reset the hair back to where it would be after you got out of the shower. Just because I know that is typically how your hair is going to naturally lay. And then as I get closer down to the line, I start to cant the comb out more because I'm taking zero hair from below this area and zero hair from above it. And I'm only blending where the line is. So that completes the clipper over comb section. You can see in the ridge area where the blend was not after clipper over comb, it blends it out nicely and we can go in with the scissors and make any last minute critiquing. Now I'm just setting the hair out. So I know exactly where I need to start with the shears. And now this tells me exactly how much I could take off the bangs because you can see this is where I just cut. And that's not taking too much length, but enough to keep it neat and rugged at the same time. And now I'll just slowly go in with shear over comb and just try to feather out any, any kind of bulk. I use the tip of the shear. Um, my thumb moves. A lot of people yell at me for that, but it's just the way I cut comfortably and I've never had a different outcome. So I kind of just like to do it the way I do it. And you can see the blend is there. He's down to almost skin in the temple area. The bangs are trimmed. That side is blended. And all it takes left is to blend the rest of the ridge and trim the top and see what he thinks. And I just follow the same guideline around the whole head. And you can see everything that you're supposed to cut. Shears are a barber's best friend. And now this area, which is just like the other side, is more delicate, so I won't go in there just chopping with a uh, shear over comb by pulling the hair. I will go in slowly and just slowly shear over comb, get anything that I see that sticks past. I also like to make sure a lot of times with a style like this, the bangs will tend to fall this way. So you want to make sure wherever your part, not your parting, but you want to make sure wherever the natural parting is, you're not cutting any of the bang bangs out. But you can see this is all blending and falling pretty nicely and we haven't even cut the top yet. So with the top, Brock just wants a trim. He's trying to keep it nice and long. So I will take anywhere from a quarter to a half an inch, depending on how long it is in the areas I'm combing through. And I follow the guideline to the back and I push it right back forward to the front. And that just helps me stay steady 
with my parting and with my levels of cutting. So now I will go in on the back of the haircut with my shears to just blend out any extra where we did clipper over comb, you could kind of still see a little bit of bulk here. So going in slowly with the clip with the uh, shears, we'll take that blend out. So now I will go in with one of my detailers. I typically like to start on one side and with the corners of the trimmer, I will go behind the ear first. And this will set a guideline to help detail the haircut and really make it pop. Lineups on these haircuts really matter because since the hair is longer, it's not as edgy as your typical skin fade. So the lineup is what's really going to make the haircut pop to other people. And then for this, Barber Bros, we call it a C-curve. I start with the corner here and I just lightly touch. And I can see, okay, I want that is where I want it to end. So I push this in here, pull away a little bit. And then with the corner, go through just like that. So now before I start the beard, I'll shape up with the, with the straight razor. Long as your blade tension is the same, you could shave any way on the skin against the grain with the, with the grain. It doesn't matter. It's all how you hold the razor. And then for behind the ear, I like to come away from the skin, or away from the hairline, I'm sorry. And pull tight. This is where you're really gonna wanna use the points of your razor correctly because you're gonna go with the curve of the shape up. And just like that, the haircut is finished and we can move on with the beard. And I'll go in with a two first. As a barber, you don't typically get someone that has such a high beard on the cheek. So this makes it really easy for you to fade. Um, it just gives you a lot more lead way. When you have a lower beard line, you know, it's a lot more room for error. So here, it just makes it easier for us to set the guidelines, put the lines in correctly and fade the beard out the way the client would like it. And then with, with this, you can see I'm using just the corner of the two. And like I said, I use the corner on all my clippers to just create that blur. It gives it a jagged cut instead of a straight cut with the teeth. And again, with the one and a half open, combing after every cut, going down and continuing to use the corner, continuing to comb through every time just to get loose hairs out of there. And then as I get closer to one, I start to bring it back this way towards the face using the same teeth. I believe that in, you know, from what I've been doing with Brock's beard is it just lets me keep as much of a line as possible to make it more detailed. So now I'm back with the one in the corner and you can see that this is starting to fade out and I'm starting to get into the level length that we did the haircut. And even though we went down to a one on the hair, I will go in with a half open and that'll just create a little bit more of a blend in the temple area. Again, just using one side of the clipper. So the fading with just the guards 
at this moment is done, I will match the other side and then we will go in freehand. So I'll turn his head and at this angle, I can see the hairs that I need to take off and I will slowly with the grain go through. And what I do is I try to use the heel on the cheek to keep a level line all the way down through the beard. And as long as your tension on the clipper isn't too heavy, it will hover along the hair and make it easier for you. The good thing with his coarse beard is it looks phenomenal when you do freehand. Stays very smooth. And you can see with every cut what I mean when it's getting smoother. Also with a coarse beard, it makes cutting through it freehand like so a lot easier. You know, someone with a beard that is, you know, sparse or just not as full, when you come into the beard like this, it tends to push hairs out of the way and cut them too short. With his beard, you could almost see the line get set in there and it makes your job a lot easier. And then for this part, I won't have him lean back because I want to see how it's going to look while he is looking at someone. Sometimes you have to get in uncomfortable positions in order to make the right cut. What I'm doing right now is I kind of find, found out this method on my own. I'm sure other people do do it. I like to do this to kind of make, keep it keeps a little bit of a block look on the beard, but it blends it down and takes out that line that you can see at the very edge of the beard. And all I'm doing is raking through with the clipper like this. Very unorthodox, I know, but I've noticed it works really well. So you can see right here where his, right before his hair starts to curl up, his hair kind of starts to curl down. What I'll actually use there will be shears. Um, that just softens it. I'm not taking as much hair at once. And you can see a little bit of hair sticking out the side here. This is where I'll get my beard shears. Um, they're curved, they're made for the beard. They're actually made to cut to the beard's curve. You can see here, typically the edges of the beard here will stick out regardless of how you cut it. So I like to comb that through, take this shear and you can see just using the end, it takes that out. So now for the detailing of the beard, I always have him rest his head back. That's just for stability so I could create the sharpest lines possible. I will do his beard the same way. I do every beard and I go in forward just like I'm trimming a hairline. And all I do with this is I find where the hair is almost faint here. And I just create the line. And that makes it way easier to shave. You know where you're going up to. And then I could kind of just lightly tap it here. Using the blade like this makes it straighter. And then for the bottom of the neck, 
That's all razor work. This is just making it easier to shave through. Like I said, just getting the extras and making it as sharp as possible. I've said in videos in the past, the shave gel is important because I like to use hot lather on full shaves, but if I need to see the lines that I'm putting into the beard, I need to use something clear. So elegant shave gel is perfect for this. So now I'll apply a hot towel. That just helps soften the hair follicles, makes it a lot easier to shave. Helps you get right down to the skin with no stubble, even though Brock's hair is made of steel. For shaving the upper cheek, I keep him canted up nice so where it's eye level with me so I can see everything perfectly. Again, I use the comb to comb the hair with the grain. And I will use the edge of my straight razor to detail this C curve. I use a quick motion away from the skin, but as I get closer, you could hear, even with the hairs, that I'm moving the blade slower, and that's to create a level line. Don't forget to comb the hairs or brush the hairs off your razor. That'll also kind of hide things from you and you may end up going too deep. All about the angle of your razor. So the more redness, the flatter I hold the blade and I kind of brush off the skin. Um, obviously you don't want to hurt your client, so if you have to sacrifice a little bit of a sharp line to not put a blood mark or cut anything, that's obviously a better decision. So now what I'll do is I will come into the mustache for the final touch on the beard, and I will let him look at the beard to tell me how good of a job I did. So I'll be using Old Money, the sea salt spray, and the styling balm. Um, there's different ways that you could use it. I like to use the styling balm first, blow dry through, and then use the sea salt spray. I like to go through all my fingers, kind of like I'm washing my hands. And then I go from the back forward. And then style through with my hands like this. And you could kind of already see right there that it gives it the almost a desired look, but with the styling with the hot tools will make it look a lot more drastic. And that'll kind of lift the hair up there. Every time I go through, I tend to take a little bit more hair, but the closer I go to the back, instead of coming up, I will start to follow the head like this to kind of give it that flush look. And that sets the hair, that is just with the styling balm. And then what I'll do is I will use a texture comb and I will go through the hair while spraying the sea salt spray. Make sure you shake the sea salt spray before you use it. And then I will go through one more time, a little bit farther away from the head. And just kind of use my fingers to give it that natural push through style. And then you could almost with your hand and the comb, 
set it nice and make sure everything around is blended proportionately. So that finishes the haircut. This is a skin taper, temple fade down to shadow with a beard trim and a lineup. you thought that uh, you weren't going to see me around anymore. Well, it's true. If you want to see me around, you got to head over to Beard Brand Alliance. Otherwise, if you hate me, stick around here at Beard Brand. I'm not here anymore.